flagship devices just being released and announced, I felt it was a great time to reflect on some of the popular flagship devices from back in 2014, going over things such as what's changed, are they still worth buying, and how have they aged over the last six months to a year? This will be kind of a mini series, and I just want to start it off with the Moto X second gen smartphone, which happens to be one of my favorite Android devices from 2014. Now, I'm not going to relist all the specs about the device because that hasn't changed since it was originally released, but I will include the specs in the description down below and of course on my website for your reference. Now the original Moto X was a hit, and when it was released it didn't have the best specs compared to the other flagship devices at the time, but it did include an almost like stock Android experience, and on top of it Motorola introduced some pretty cool features. Now the best thing about it is Motorola also started rolling out a program called Motomaker, which allowed you to customize the look and feel of your smartphone. Fast forward to 2014 and Motorola released a more premium device with top of the line specs and metal edges. So the first complaint was the battery life. The phone only has a 2300 milliamp battery which is really not that big for a phone that has a 5.2 inch AMOLED display. A lot of people had troubles getting through the day and found themselves having to charge or top up frequently. This was when the phone was running KitKat, but now that it's got actually Android 5.0 Lollipop, people are reporting that they're getting between 2-4 to four hours of extra battery life. And this held up true when I actually tested the phone. I had no problems getting through the whole day with fairly moderate to heavy use. And I also suspect that once the Moto X receives Android 5.1, the battery life will continue to improve. So next up is the backing of the phone. If you have the bamboo model of the Moto X, then people are reporting that it's still in fantastic condition and that the overall look of the phone still looks and feels great. Now there are people who opted for the leather version and they're saying that the back has not aged well at all and it kind of reminds them of a worn leather glove. Now I have the black one with a soft plastic backing in my hand and overall it still looks and feels fantastic. So finally the last complaint was the camera, which at the time was said to be inconsistent and that taking the same photo more than once often in different looking pictures. Sometimes you agreed with really great photos and other times not so much. Now overall I found these inconsistencies to be fixed with Android 5.0 Lollipop. I feel the camera to be a lot more responsive and take better pictures. Um, it seems like the upgrade has resolved a lot of these issues. Now it isn't the best camera on the market, but it's still a good camera. So if you're a heavy social media user and snap a lot of photos, you're not going to be disappointed with this camera. So it seems like most of the complaints from back in 2014 have been addressed with a simple upgrade to Android 5.0 Lollipop. Now how does the phone actually run today? Well it still holds a Snapdragon 801 processor with 2GB of RAM, but because it runs an almost stock version of Android, the phone still runs extremely fast. You won't be disappointed with the performance of the phone and should have no problems lasting you another 2 years. Now the screen is AMOLED, and if you like very deep blacks, blues, reds, and greens, then you'll continue to love this great screen. The whites are a little bluish gray, and that's not really a Moto X problem, but more of an AMOLED issue, because it's really hard for AMOLED screens to get a true white color. The exaggerated colors of the AMOLED panel made photos look amazing. Even photos that didn't look that great on a regular IPS display or even on your monitor came to life on the Moto X. So would I actually still buy this phone? Most definitely. It looks great, feels premium, and doesn't sacrifice too much compared to other comparable offerings. Because it's last year's model, I would try to get a deal on it. I think anywhere from $0 to $50 on a two-year contract seems pretty fair. Now if you don't like contracts, the phone is being sold unlocked from Motorola for $400 US. Unfortunately here in Canada they're still charging 600 Canadian, so you're most likely better off getting it on contract or maybe have a friend in the States ship it to you. Now because the Moto X third generation smartphone isn't going to be released or announced until sometime later in the fall, here's what I'd like to see change. First, I'm totally okay with design. I think it looks really good. So if they only make small changes to the actual overall design, I'm totally fine with that. But I'd like to see thinner bezels, a better camera, I'd like to see better sound, so instead of having one speaker on the front, I'd like to see two. And most importantly, I'd like to see a bigger battery, so that you have no problems getting to maybe two days of battery life. So what do you guys think of the Moto X? Would you guys still buy the phone? If you do, give it a big thumbs up. Also, what do you think of this little mini-series? Do you want to see more flagship devices reviewed from last year? Let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please go ahead and do so. And I'll see everybody in the next episode.